Hi guys, this is Teacher SP and welcome back to my channel. So for today's lesson, I'm going to teach you about the chain rule for differentiation. So from our previous lesson, I have already discussed about the basic rule for differentiation from our previous video, right? So uh, I have discussed there about the constant rule for differentiation, the identity, and the power rule. So, and also, I have already discussed about the sum and difference, the product rule, and the quotient rule for differentiation. So, for our la last topic about the calculus, I'm going to discuss about the chain rule for differentiation. So, we, I'm going to uh, discuss to you and let us apply what you have learned from our previous lesson. So, if you are interested in this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and tap the notification bell so that you will be updated for whatever videos tutorial that I'm going to upload. Are you ready, guys? So, if you are ready, let's begin. about the chain rule for differentiation so it's all about calculus and I have here the symbolic statement so the symbolic statement of the chain rule is equal to f of g of x and if you're going to get the derivative of this using the chain rule for differentiation that is equal to d over dx so this d over dx is what do you call the not notation and that is f of g of x. So, the symbolic statement for that, when you're going to get the derivative, that is equal to f prime. Meaning, f prime is also same as dx over dy or d over dx times the quantity of g of x minus g prime of x. So, meaning the prime and prime here is the derivative. So, I have here, if you're going to apply the symbolic statement using the chain rule for differentiation. So our example number one is differentiate h of x is equal to 3x minus 2 raised to the fourth power. First of all, we are going to identify our given. So the most important thing is when you are computing, like for example in mathematics, when you're computing the equation, see to it that you have to write the given. So, first of all, we are going to identify the outer function. So, when we are talking about the outer function, the outer function is whatever is the variable that I used here, 3x minus 2. So, the variable there is x. So, you can use a variable from the alphabet A up to Z. So, but mostly in mathematics, we are using x, y, and z. So, that is equal to x and whatever power so the power there is 4 so this is now your outer function and second we are going to get the inner function so when we're talking about the inner function that is 3x minus 2 meaning the equation inside the parenthesis so inner function that is equal to 3x minus 2 so after you have get the uh, outer function and the inner function, let us follow the steps. Meaning, we are going to get the derivative of this two. So for your step one, so that is equal to d over dx, x to the fourth. So we will be getting the derivative of x to the fourth. And what rule are you going to use using the power rule according to the power rule guys that you are going to multiply the power from the base and subtract the power by one meaning n minus one n stands for a real number so if you're going to get the derivative for this four times one will give you four x and four minus one will give you three 
So therefore, the derivative of x to the fourth is equal to 4x cubed. Second, we are going to get the derivative of d over dx times the quantity of 3x minus 2. So, the derivative of this, now, let us apply the identity rule and the constant rule. From our previous lesson, the basic rule for differentiation. So, we know that x is the identity, so we have to substitute 1 to the x. So, 3 times 1 will give you 3. But we know that 2 is a constant, and the derivative for that is 0. So, you don't need to write 0. So, that is equal to 3. So, you have already the derivative of the outer function and the inner function. And for the step 3, we are going to apply what the symbolic statement. So when we are talking about a symbolic statement, that is f prime of g of x minus g prime of x. So we know that our f of x, the derivative is equal to 4x cubed. But what are you going to do is, you are going to write like this, h of x. So that is equal to... Whatever number is this, so that is equal to 4 times your inner function. The inner function is, so copy, 3x minus 2 raised to the third power. Where did you get the third power? From the, ba from the derivative of x to the fourth. So that is equal to cube. How about the x? You don't need to write the x outside because the variable there is of the inner function, inner side. And times the minus the derivative of g prime of x. So that is equal to times the derivative of g prime of x. So the g prime of x, this is the inner function, and that is equal to 3. So our final answer you don't need to use the algebra wherein you will be getting the product 3x minus 2 raised to the third power. But whatever constant there, whatever real numbers, that's the right time that you are going to combine it. So 4 times 3 will give you 12 times the quantity of 3x minus 2 raised to the third power. So therefore, the derivative of h of x is equal to 3x minus 2 raised to the fourth power is equal to 12 times the quantity of 3x minus 2 cubed. Okay, so that's it. So let us proceed now to example number 2. Example number 2, guys, we have differentiate y is equal to the quantity of x squared plus 5 to the third power. So first, we are going to identify the outer function. So first step, the outer function is equal to, so whatever variable that we are using here, we use x and the exponent. So that is equal to x cubed. Next is we are going to identify the inner function. So the inner function is equal to x squared plus 5. So next step, we are going to get the derivative of this. So that is equal to d over dx times the quantity of x cubed. So if you will get the derivative, 3 times 1 because the numerical coefficient of x is 1. So 3 times 1 will give you 3 x 3 minus 1 will give you squared so 3x squared next step we are going to get the derivative of our inner function and that is equal to x squared plus 5 so 2 times 1 will give you 2x and then 2 minus 1 will give you 1 so you don't need to write the exponent 1 and 5 is a constant, so the derivative of that is 0. Always remember, guys, that the derivative of a constant is always equal to 0. So you don't need to write 0 there. So that is equal to 2x. And for the third step, we are going to 
combine the two. So h of x, that is equal to, so the number here is 3, that is f prime, times the quantity, the g of x. So the g of x or the inner function is equal to x squared plus 5, okay, times g prime of x. So that is equal to 2x. Okay, and there is a square there, so you have to write the square. After this, we are going to combine the real numbers, so we can combine 3 and 2. So if you're going to multiply 3 times 2 and there is a variable x, then it will give you with a final answer of 6x times the quantity of x squared plus 5 raised to the second power. So therefore, the derivative of y is equal to x squared plus 5 raised to the third power is equal to 6x times the quantity of x squared plus 5 raised to the second power. So for our example number 3, I will be teaching you guys how are you going to get the derivative of, and this is the last example, the derivative of a uh, function, wherein a trigonometric function, we know that there are six trigonometric functions in the trigonometry, the sine, the cos and the tangent, the cosecant, second, and the cotangent. So I will be using sine, and how are you going to get the derivative for that? Okay, so that is for example number three. Okay, so I'm going to erase the writings on the board. So our last example, number three, is we are going to get differentiate, differentiate h of x is equal to sine times the quantity of x squared plus 1. So, first, outer function is sine. Second is inner function is x squared plus 1. Okay? So, sine x, because there is a variable there. So, sine x, x squared plus 1. And then, get the derivative. So, letter C, d over dx times sine x. So, therefore, the derivative of, take note, guys, that the derivative of sine is cosine. So, sine x is equal to cosine x. And then, next step is d over dx times your inner function. That is equal to x squared plus 1. So, 2 times 1 is equal to 2 x raised to 2 minus 1. So, you don't need to write the power of the exponent and 0. So, you don't need to write 0. And the last step is you are going to combine. So, that is equal to h of x is equal to your cosine. So, cosine times the quantity of your g of x, the inner function, x squared plus 1. There is no variable there or there is no exponent. Proceed to g prime of x, which is 2x. So, if we are going to combine, see, take note, guys, that if there is a number and a function, see to it that you have to write the number first and a variable plus the function. So, cos cosine times 2x will give you 2x cosine times the quantity of x squared plus 1. So, therefore, this is now the derivative of sine times the quantity of x squared plus 1. So, I hope, guys, that I have shared my knowledge when it comes to uh, calculus and in getting the derivative of a number using the chain rule. And we have already applied what you have learned from our previous lesson about the basic rule for derivative. So, thank you guys for watching and have a great day, everyone.